My name's Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started, this is where I'm heading and this is where I am now. I've run 14,223 kilometres so far and I've got 2,310 left to go. So far on the mission. I've survived alone in the desert, a robbery at gunpoint, near death in the jungle, a brutal crash, horror infested waters, malnutrition, sickness and injuries. I've raised £210,000 for charity. In this episode, I plunge deeper into the Sahara, visit one of the largest refugee camps in Africa, discover the problems they face and tell you what you can do to help. Geezer, beauty routine is back. <laughs> I haven't combed my hair in about a week. What's the game plan for today? Just gonna bang another 75, I think at least. 31 days to go. I hit the lovely fresh tarmac for another beautiful day under the Algerian sun to smash out some hard mileage. I was still adjusting to the brutal distances I need to reach to finish, but I was surprised how well my body was coping. Given how injured I was and how hard I'd struggled off-road, I'd expected far worse. But with 31 days left, there was still plenty of time for it to go wrong. Oh, yo. Lovely run. Lovely stuff. I think a lot of people on this channel, they have spoken out that they would love to see more like vlogs. Holding the camera yourself, yeah. talking to the camera. Yeah. Do you think somewhere ever in the future you're ever gonna properly vlog? Yeah, I think I will. But like, obviously I haven't done it very often on uh, this mission. And I'm just gonna be real with you, it's mostly because I'm just really <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> what I am looking forward to is like going back to a life where I don't have to put my body through the absolute ringer every single day. I'll be able to look back on what's happened over the last year and share some more of like my reflections on this journey. Do you have like any time estimation? When when can people expect they have long the loft vlogs to come? <laughs> right, I'm definitely gonna we're gonna carry on making content after the project. I'm still kind of figuring out exactly what that's gonna look like, but I actually reckon it's gonna be more exciting. There's plenty more things in the pipeline. There's lots more ideas to come. Don't worry, we'll not be totally vanishing once Project Africa is finished. We might do for a bit. Start, take a breather, well then. Yeah, we'll be back with you in like a year. <laughs>desert had already become incredibly remote, a solid reminder that I was still deep in the Sahara. Out of nowhere, the wind began to pick up yet again, lifting sand off the desert floor and pelting out me with full force. But this time, there was a difference. Let's get a bit sandy. I don't know why. I don't know if you can hear me, but it's really beautiful. It's just a bit annoying as well. I actually think this is the first tailwind I've had in 321 days. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I call it cheating. Running to the Sahara is not supposed to be like this. It's always the hardest event you ever had in your life coming from the front. That's like the ground I, I had my fair share that. No, 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 no. <laughs> like those few days, that doesn't count. I call it cheating. <laughs> You're manipulating the weather circumstances to get the world record. Yeah, yeah that I agree. That's just the power of God I see you not you'll Atheist, me and me and God, we've been <laughs> chatting. I heard he's been yeah. changed words for all this. <laughs> you had a big fallout for a while though, didn't you? you ah, shush. What are you cooking, Gus? Um, water, Jamie. Whoa. Nice. Fuck. How do you do that? You need to like turn on all the other buttons. No. <laughs> turn on. Should be very safe. Now I hope that the tent doesn't explode. Didn't. They put the tent on the fire. I hope, I hope you'll be able to taste the difference tonight. Yeah. Yo, you. There'll be like more, more love. It's not boiling yet, it's true. You can't rush art, can you? That's what I've been trying to tell everyone for the last. <laughs> <laughs> when you say put love into it, it's not like a physical process. What yeah, it's like comp. <sighs> no! <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm gonna leave. As I set out for my final 35k, I was unstoppable. My body was still in pieces and every step was painful, but I had a strong tailwind blowing me forwards and silky smooth tarmac underfoot. In any other circumstances, 
This would be tough conditions for running, but after my stretch without roads, it was paradise. Welcome back, mate. Yo. What do you want to do first? Or get in bed. Oh. Where are we going, Jamie? Back to Sindhu. Those are the refugee camps, and you have to drive there in the morning. Yeah, you've not woken up. No, no. no. <laughs> Half asleep, we drove two hours back to find our friends in Tindouf. We arrived at 2 a.m. thinking everyone would be asleep, but no. Instead, they insisted on making a full banquet for Stan and Gus. There is again in his perfect TED outfit. Perfect. <laughs> Take good care of us with some nice soups, fresh bread, water, the best. Enjoy in your uh, in your next pour ton séjour ici. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> welcome, is, uh, welcome. Friend. Today we'd have the privilege of visiting the Sahari refugee camps of Tindouf. The Saharis are indigenous people of Western Sahara who have been forced from their homeland since 1975 by war over their country. These camps are also the place where one of the charities, Sandblast, aimed to make a difference. But before we could even make it, we were a team member down. So, uh, plot twist. Now this uh, We had to head up with some Mauritanian fuel last night because we didn't have enough to get back to Tindouf. And it's immediately f***ed the engine again. Totally screwed. She won't even drive. It happened a lot quicker than last time as well, which is kind of worrying. And also it's making a brand new, exciting, rattling sound. So I'm stuck on the side of the road with a Polisario officer. The gendarme can't help me because it's a Polisario-controlled region. So I think I might have to wait for the boys to come back from the camps less than ideal. With Stan on the side of the road hoping for a tow and to fix Nelly, the rest of us continued on to the camps. Shatsi, we're in there. We're in there. This is the Secretary General of the Ministry of Education, the Central Director of Sport in the Ministry of Youth and Sport. Oh, amazing. They are here to, to meet you and to welcome you here. All yours. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having us. Well, hopefully we can show some people back from the UK and from Europe uh, about what is going on here and we would love to be able to learn about uh, the struggle that's been going on here and the people and the cause and hopefully you know we can do our little bit to try and help as much as we can. Really interesting, you know, we've kind of seen bits and heard bits but to actually be here and like, speak to the people, the whole country of people that have just been totally displaced from where yeah, where they're from. Yeah, like, yeah, and it's not a problem that's going away, it's, 40, it's 47 years it's been going on. After watching the young people of the camp play a football match, we were invited to visit one of the many projects aiming to improve life in the camp. This was a sports club, but with a very specific aim. Amazing. We started this football club, 2019. Yeah. You, can, you, can, you can see this chairs here, the children did that, did it. Come um, for us. Very good. Very how, how do you rate this chair? Ten out of ten. <laughs> what needs to be done to take this to like the next level? So what to maybe? The big, the big problem that he's facing, he and his uh, children, is sporting structures here. There is nothing where we can like keep the, the children together. He's like facing a lot of problems with balls, t-shirts, and everything here. He believes that every born child prefers sport than education. And because of that, he thinks that with the sport, with football, can show the children that are the most important things in life. Health, education and a good environment. Yeah. So? the help of Russ Cook, his mum. Yeah. We're able to donate some soccer balls. Spent all last night inflating yeah. some balls. <laughs> and here we have several, a lot of stuff like pencils yeah. for the children to, to draw plenty of goodies. Sad. He's thanking you for this. It was amazing to see what these people were attempting to achieve here, but it was clear they were struggling for supplies. And as we visited this hospital, it was the same story. Hey, nice to meet you, sir. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Yeah. Oh, so you've come from Italy, right? Yeah, sorry. Why did you decide to come here? Like, what was it about? I think that it could be really useful if somebody more know something about this situation, about this hospital, because what they discovered, what we found here is that 
we have to manage more or less the same problem we have in Italy or in New York but with free drugs. And we don't have the drugs they, they need. What do you think is one thing that maybe people watching, one thing that we can do to try and help the situation? There are many doctors coming here. Yeah. Every year. But a nice thing would be, instead of just come and do the job and leave, would be to teach someone. But there is another problem with that if you teach, they leave. Because here, here nobody pays. Nobody will give you a lot of money. I think mm. this, is, this is really important. Yeah, like pay them. Mm. Maybe from the association of Europe, pay them to stay here. What has been for me the big bang? No one knows, no one cares. If I don't know, if Europe do doesn't know, if no one knows about this situation, no one cares and no one will care. And so the best thing that you with your work, that could be diffused, it could yeah. be for everyone. So it's incredible that yeah. no one knows, I didn't know yeah, anything about this fact. Yeah. And we have to create aware about this situation. I have thought many times these days about Italy, I am in uh, Florence, I imagine Florence be destroyed and someone from another country arrives there and say this is not your home anymore. Everyone in the world would know the situation. Here that problem, that situation and no one knows Cheers. anything. Today is the, you know, uh, March 8th and it's a Women's Day, International Women's Day. Here in Sahara, we, we think like differently than the other neighbors here. Mm -hmm. Here in the camps, everything was built. Hospitals, schools, central authorities here was built by women, by their hands. Everything here is under the authority of women. This camp is governed by women. She is the number one power here. And one of these incredible women kindly invited us to her tent host us for lunch and chat more about the state of the camps. The first thing that any Sahrawi will ask is his independence. We don't need anything except this goal. The freedom in doing anything I want, I will find it only in my country. I'll be back for the Sahara Marathon next year. He said that it will be an honor to share with us the Sahara Marathon. But he wished that, uh, that next year you could bring a cocktail of uh, British and also the North Europe and these countries. Mm -hmm. If you can bring them, it will be the best thing. Yes. You share us. Mm. Hopefully you can. All the people watching at home. Sahara Marathon 2025. So you're basically part of the Sahara Marathon uh, committee right now, right? Yeah. Signed. Sealed. Delivered. Most difficult marathon in the world. I reckon that's how we pitch it. But there's one easy factor, and that's that the people are the nicest of the world. This is true. The Sahara Marathon is an incredible fundraising effort, charting a marathon between the refugee camps straight across the desert. It's one of the hardest races in the world, taking place every year, and I'm really excited to now be a part of that community. If a challenge like this sounds like something you'd love, sign up via the link in the description and join me next year to run it. We made our way to one final project, who had an ingenious way to produce food in the middle of the Sahara Desert. This is Ahmed. He's the oldest son in this family. This is his sister. They are trying to run this farm. They built everything here by themselves. And he's trying to, to raise fish here in a way that is like, you can say, friend of, of nature. Man is one of the most wanted products here. We want it for tea. Yes. The pieces of the fish are filtered out and that concentrate of dirty water is used as fertilizer for the mint. The water goes through and go back to the fish. It's kind of sucker. So what are the hopes for the future of the whole project? The investment in the problem also. We have a lot of ideas. They can't find these ideas. He's saying that thing that you are doing is the best thing that can happen. And you came here to see us and show the world who we are and that stuff. But what you are doing is better than what they are doing. They thank you for this. For all thank this. you very much, sir. Thank you. Well, I don't agree. I think what he's doing is incredible. Yes, me too. Thank you. I know. Me too. I know. Because 
The resourcefulness, kindness and relentless optimism of these people was truly inspiring, but the situation in these camps, even 47 years after they were built, was dire. It's a privilege to be able to tell these people's story and hopefully shine some light on their struggles, but we can do one better. The real reason we came here today was to talk about one of our charities, Sandblast. We've seen a few of the projects looking to create change, and this is another. Sandblast's aim is to empower the Sahari people through creative education, raise awareness of their situation, and enable them to make a living through the arts. They run countless projects across the camps, including the Sahara Marathon. This is one of the oldest refugee crises in the world, with over 100,000 refugees. Yet it's still little known, so please, if you can, donate to our charity fundraiser. We're still a long way off a million, and it would mean the world to hit it. If you want to go a step further, you can now create your own challenge and raise money alongside me for the cause. Get involved with hashtag RaiseWithRuss in the description of this video and let's hit that goal together. As we left the camps, Gus and I headed back to sleep and Jamie and Stan waited for our best friend Hakeem to fix the van yet again. How's Nelly feeling? Uh, yeah, no, Nelly's feeling great. Back to her old ways. Nice. Step on. Step on. We're off to meet the boys yet again after waiting at least 18 hours for our escort, that's fair. Yeah. But it, it meant we got to say goodbye to our friends again. People in Algeria have been amazing, but the people in that hotel have been just incredible. So, so kind. Definitely I mean, just- going to miss them. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Jamie and Stan took a shiny new Nelly back north to join us, ready to move again the next day. Good morning. People again. We didn't have our bedding in Nelly. Even yours? Yeah. That's crazy, bless you. Where was Gus slept? He's here as well. Oh. Freeze. Did you, did you spoon? I need to get out running. Yes, you do. 29 days to go. When you look on the map, yeah, and then you look at how far away Nuke Shot is, and then you look at how far away the northern tip of Tunisia, so you, it, it looks pretty grim, can't lie. All right, sweet. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. Ploughed off yet again into the vast expanses of sweet f cool to steadily inch my body some more. So you said a lot about here in Algeria being easier with the tarmac. Yeah. But what is the biggest challenge so far in Algeria? I think the biggest challenge is just the increase in mileage, man. 75k a day is pretty brutal, can't I? Muscles just pretty fucked. Ah, 29 days to go. I can, I can hack it. You know what I just found in the supermarket? Go on. Plenty of sweets. Oh yeah, yeah! What kind of sweets did you buy? I bought some more Eric style, so I'm yeah. curious how they're gonna be. Nice. Then there's some that look just like the sourish gummy ones. Yeah, sick. And I bought one package of uh, normal gummy. Nice. That sounds like a good mix. Incensed by the thought of new sweeties, I found a new wave of energy to carry me on. The rest of the day went by smoothly, a powerful tailwind in my back and the straight, pristine desert roads carrying me forward bit by bit towards Tunisia. Hey, hey. F me, how much difference does that tailwind make? Just want to say, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Thank God. It is such a blessing to be on the nice end of a, of a wind. Sandstorms are a little fairly annoying, but when they're with you, I'm not going to complain. Long may it continue, inshallah. Inshallah. Do you still think like the world record's gonna be valid if you're like winter you're back in the Sahara? Yeah. I could have wind on my back every day for the rest of the mission and it would not make up for the amount of times I've been against the wind. Like the whole of Namibia I was basically against the wind. I reckon it's cheating. <laughs> what do you reckon what I should do about it, Gus? I reckon I you take now a few rest days till like the wind changes direction again. Yeah. Okay. Pushed on hard with the wind on my side yet again. If this kept up, I was actually in with a chance of making it to the end on time. Only time would tell. What is it, Sunday? Sunday, yeah. God stay. Yeah, enjoying it, taking a rest like God meant. That, that, that's it's not like that's you. It's a resting day, right? Yeah. It's Sunday, so. Yeah, uh, if you're a God's warrior, then you go twice as hard on Sunday. So I'm going to do 150k. Do you reckon you could if you really had to? Of course I could. Go on, then. Yeah. 
f***ing Ross Cook. Man. You'll do one as well, won't you, guys? Ross, excuse me. <laughs> Rob, he can we've do already, one. We've already seen this play out. I want to see it again. Do you reckon you do better now? Right, you're f***ed. You're, He's you're so f***ed. You're just f***ing. Yeah. Last time I was on antibiotics, they didn't sleep for a week properly. Two days ago, uh, he asked me what the maximum number of ibuprofen you could take in a day is. Bro, I saw you hobbling Bro. like 24 hours ago. Um, oh, you collapsed. Lost. You literally collapsed to your knees to, like three days ago, dude. I'm already off painkillers since like 12 hours. I should be <laughs> fine. I hit the road again, powering forward. Since I'd hit the tarmac, I felt pretty okay with just a few aches and pains and adapted well to the insane mileage. But today, I began to feel my first injury coming on. This wasn't going to be the easy home straight I dreamed of. Yo. Oh. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Did you enjoy your, uh, your running session? Uh, it's a bit of a difficult one. I think I've uh, twinged a muscle. Uh, it keeps spasming quite bad. But oh, I'm gonna get the massage gone out and then hopefully it'll be alright. Sounds like I should just give it a few more days till you're a bit more weaker and then challenge you for 200k. <laughs> I'm just too competitive, mate. If you try and challenge me, uh, it will just ignite my ego and uh, all my injuries will be cured. So maybe it's a good idea. Maybe we should do it. Yeah, sure. Oh, I just thought it, that's, that's a bad one. Bit of vacuum, mate. I've been, I've been bad today. That like, whole last twenty k, I thought I was gonna sh myself the entire time. Ooh. <laughs> what a frame this is. <laughs> I've got my new on. Feel a bit bad for the guys because they're following me quite. <laughs> it happened yesterday on the side of the road and they just kind of sit there and I'm like, <laughs> sorry boys, game's the game. Smashing through the pain of my injury, I battled on into the night towards 75 kilometers. But honestly, our visit to the camps had put into perspective my struggles. I had chosen to be here and it was a privilege to feel this pain. This thought kept me going until the run was stopped in its tracks. I don't, know, I don't know if Gus said they're not letting us carry on past this checkpoint oh. until the morning. Yeah, yeah. Something to do with gendarmerie changing hands or something. Uh, oh, okay. How far is that total about? 69 and a half. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it could be worse. Yeah, 6k is not too bad. Yeah, they're pretty chill, to be fair. Yeah, they're not too bad. It is like, too what is it, midnight now? Now it is, yeah. Kind of. So it's kind of fair, but yeah. a bit inconvenient. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go to bed. Enjoy it. In the next episode, I smash the biggest mileage of the mission, celebrate my second year in Africa, and my Achilles packs in. <laughs>